Okay, so I've got through this max IPIN with a new file, and uh, I've set it to, uh, well, uh, a starting file. I'm just going to check the units under Customize. Unit Setup. It's going to make sure it's on metric and millimetres, which is often a good thing to check at first. If you've come to a computer that other people have used, it may be set to different units. And then I'm simply going to make a box. Clicking and dragging. Bring that up. And then you can see over in the um, parameters panel there, uh, I've got the size. It's a good habit if you're not already doing this to switch to the Modify tab to adjust the parameters there because it won't always come up on the Create tab but will always come up on the Modify tab. So there, I want this to be about the size of a, a typical space. So I'm going to make it uh, 4,000 by 4,000 by 3,000. Zooming out there, okay, so that's about the size of a standard room. You can make it a bit larger, but I'll, and I will be making it larger in a minute, but that's a good starting point. Uh, but uh, because uh, I want to make some changes to this in a certain way, I'm going to add some extra segments. We're going to add some different uh, values here, so I'll put in a few different uh, uh, three width segments. Uh, just two length segments should be okay, and I'll put in uh, just two height segments as well. So what I'm going to do here is convert this to an editable poly by right clicking and then convert to editable poly. And once I've done that, I can't easily change the number of segments except by directly modelling and that's a lot more work. So when you're modelling in this way, it's good to just think about the starting setup you want in terms of the, the divisions with in your original um, form. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to Polygon. So over here you can see the Polygon option. And I'm going to delete all of the bottom. So just using Control, I can select those six faces, delete, and I've got an open box at the bottom. And then I'm going to delete uh, one of these on the side, and that's going to make a simple opening. Pretty boring though, so I'm going to make this a bit more interesting now switching to Vertex and I'm going to select a group of polygons with a window and I want to move them so I'm going to switch to the Move tool can lift those up starting to look a bit more like a real room now move these across and then I can start to deform it so with uh, just selections of some of these I can make it a bit more interesting Just moving these around, and notice how I'm just using one axis at a time, most of the time. So I can switch to Edge and do the same thing. Okay, so already we've got something much more interesting on this side, and I can just keep doing that on each side of, the, um, of that space. So I'll bring this out as well. I'm going to change the selection up here to Window. So if you remember in AutoCAD and Revit, you have the option to select with a window or a crossing depending on whether you select left to right or right to left. In Max, it doesn't work that way. You have an option on the main toolbar to switch between window and crossing. So I've just changed to Window there so I can select the edges on the right and bring those over. And then again, I can continue deforming this... Uh, this original shape. So it's just the crumpled paper bag sort of look I'm after, which is, so you know, a lot of uh, deconstructivist design is based on this sort of approach. Okay, so I could spend a lot longer making this more interesting, but. Uh, Maybe just do a couple more and that might do for now. Okay, so I'll just give you a basic idea. That's one approach to modelling. Focusing on uh, individual polygons, edges and vertices. 
And so even though it's just a, um, a thin shell at the moment, if you remember from the tutorial you've just done, uh, there's one other modifier I didn't mention because it's right at the end, and that is shell. That's a really useful one when you're modelling in this way, just with a thin surface, you can then go to shell and it's going to apply a thickness. So there you can see now I've got a thickness all the way around, which is an easy way of making something that could be more solid. But because I've still got that as a modifier in the stack with editable poly below, I can always go back to the original form and keep modifying it. So I can make changes and delete other things. So maybe I'll um, put in a extra edge over here. I'll just quickly add in a new edge division over here. <coughs> Oops, sorry, it's a long cut. So cancel that. Okay, so I can delete that polygon. And then when I go out of it and back to the shell, that's obviously going to be incorporated. So uh, you can build on these polygons and, uh, and keep extending the form as much as you want to. So I could go further and extend just part of it out. So using, say, these two polygons here, go to extrude. So this is similar to what you would have done in the, um, in the tutorial. And I can select these two. And again, extrude those out. and just keep extending it that way. So now, uh, maybe I'll get sorry, all four of these, extrude those out. So notice I'm still using the extrude tool, haven't turned it off yet. So I will turn it off now, and then I can go back to working with edges. So in theory, you can extend this as far as uh, your imagination can take you. You can make any virtually any piece of geometry you can think of. And so uh, I've made complete uh, models of people using this modeling approach. Um, I've seen someone from Disney who uh, in about half an hour, 45 minutes, modeled uh, the most realistic face uh, you can imagine, just entirely using this modeling approach. Uh, just using these tools with no modifiers or anything, just using polygons and uh, adding extra surfaces from a, uh, from starting with a single plane, maybe. Okay, so again here just to finish this off, I'll delete some of those polygons in the base. Okay, so I've extended the space out and uh, it's just a, you know, obviously a thin shell at the moment, but because I have that shell modifier on the top, that's going to apply thickness to all of it. Okay, so again, that general approach to modelling is called polygonal modelling and the essential thing you need to know there isn't this whole list of modifiers. Like I said, that's not really that important at first. The main thing is to learn about polygonal modelling and understand how to get to the polygons, edges and vertices and then as you uh, become more comfortable modifying those, start to look at the different options you have for editing them. So for example, the bevel chamfer is another good one that you use in the um, exercise you've just done. So chamfers with an edge. And uh, then uh, extrude is similar to bevel, but if anything even simpler. Okay, so that's really what you want to be focusing on initially. And then the other main approach that uh, you need to look at with the second building tutorial, you can see that you are combining forms. So that's compound modelling. Okay, so looking in the um, notes here, you can see the approach we've been using is uh, again using uh, these different uh, polygonal tools and uh, we've been using some parametric tools as well. Patches and nerves 
uh, I'll point out to you, but I'm not going to encourage you to use those. You've got those as options in most 3D programs, and you definitely have them in Max. But I'd strongly recommend that you become familiar with polygonal modeling tools first before even attempting patches or NURBS. They're more complicated modeling tools. Uh, and so then the other approach that uh, isn't really mentioned that much here, but I want to just talk to you about it anyway, is um, compound objects. And that's the heading of this exercise. So here you can see Going back to the beginning of this. Okay, so it uh, talks about booleans, we'll come back to that in a second, but uh, the general heading, oh, it does say modeling using Boolean operations, I thought it said compound objects, didn't really want to mention comp Boolean at first, but uh, anyhow, I'll do that. So it all lives in the create panel, and then if you go down in the list there where it says standard primitives at first, you can choose compound objects. So all that means is combining objects. Okay, so I'll come back to that, but first I'm going to make some more boxes because I need some things to combine with this form. So I'm just going to make some boxes that intersect with my initial form. I don't need any extra segments, so I'm just going to turn those back to one and change that uh, box's height and make it maybe a bit bigger and actually narrow as well. And I'll change the colour so that it stands out. And then I might just copy that couple of times. Okay, so I've got a few boxes that intersect with my uh, form that I've modelled. So you probably have an idea what I want to do with these. I'm going to use them to make openings. Okay, so if you think about uh, the modeling options you have in Revit or even in AutoCAD, you probably remember that you can make voids in Revit. And you have all of those options in 3D programs, but then a lot more options on top of that to combine things in different ways. So that's all, uh, all comes under compound objects. So again, standard primitives. Um, is what we'll begin on and then from that list you can choose compound objects and then you'll see a couple of options that have boolean and so that's again the heading of this second tutorial modeling using boolean operations and I don't know if any of you come across that term before boolean they probably all be, uh, remember using the internet in the 90s in the early 90s maybe Remember using search engines back then? There were lots of Boolean search engines or Boolean operations was a thing. Um, anyhow, all it really means is uh, combining objects, working with sets of objects really, but uh, in this case, it's just combining two things. And uh, it's the, the term really um, is more confusing than it sounds because it's just named after a guy called George Bull. That's really where it comes from. He was a mathematician in the 19th century who came up with, with a type of algebra. Uh, but uh, just think of it as working with, with, um, with different objects in combination to achieve a final result. And so with this main object selected, again, under compound objects, you can see that we have Boolean. That's the old tool it's been replaced essentially by pro-boolean. So don't use boolean, use pro-boolean, it's much better. So once you choose pro-boolean, we'll see then that by default it'll be set to subtraction. Do you remember in AutoCAD way back, uh, probably in first year, um, using 
subtract and union in um, the solid modeling there. You probably don't remember much of the 3D because I know you only did it at the end. But um, yeah, it's an option in AutoCAD as well. Uh, and the equivalent in Revit though would be void. I suppose the equivalent to union in Revit would be join. So you have similar options in, in Revit. That's right, all 3D programs have these options. Uh, so it's a standard thing you need to be able to do with the 3D program. Combining them, often just, just subtract one from another. So I'm going to leave it on subtraction, and then I'm just going to click Start Picking. Then I'm going to choose my boxes, and they're automatically going to be subtracted from the initial form. And then I'm going to turn off Start Picking to let it know I've finished. So that's now one combined object. So it's a combination of the initial thing that I modelled, but the boxes are part of it as well. So I can look in the stack here. It's at the bottom with this one. And you can see then I've got the union, which is the original box I began with, and then each of these other subtracted boxes, which I can still go back and modify. Okay, so I can go and choose, well, it's the, uh, the one at the end here. So I can modify the position of that opening, or I can change the size of it, because all of those combined objects are still together in that combined uh, compound form. So I'm changing the height there, and then again, you can still change the position. So it's a really versatile modeling approach, and often when you're modeling built forms, you need to be able to access things in this way, especially when you're, again, making things like openings. But it's also useful when you're combining uh, objects. So another approach to it is to uh, add things. So I'm just going to make a few more boxes just to finish off. So I'll make these boxes in the, uh, in the top view, just so I can see more clearly. Yeah, maybe I'll do it on this side, because that's the flattest. Okay, so I've made another little box shape there. And I'll, again, uh, just maximise that. And I'm going to lift it up, and then, using Shift, copy it a few times. This time I might do it as an instance, just for something different. So you can see then that they all change in the same way, and so I can duplicate these all over the surface there. And uh, get a few more, fairly randomly. So this is the sort of thing you see quite often these days. Um, do you all know Jean Nouvelle? No? You must know Jean Nouvelle. No? French architect, world famous architect, probably one of the top four or five architects in the world. He did the, the green building at Central Park in the city, you know, on Broadway, the one that won building of the year last year. Yeah, the green, the big, one big tall thing with uh, plants growing all over it. Yeah. yeah. But he's done stuff all around the world. And um, when I first started studying architecture, he was just becoming famous. And uh, so... Uh, I studied him quite a bit, and he was heavily influenced by the Alien movies, believe it or not. Uh, and so a lot of the science fiction sets that you see in those movies, he used as inspiration for his designs. So they had lots of these projecting panels and things like that. Often they'd make them different shapes, and you can easily make these uh, unique if you want to. I just wanted to show you the instance option as well, but I can easily make them unique so that they can be different sizes. Okay, so I've got all these different panels. I'll just turn the edges on so you can see a bit more clearly. Uh, but now I want those combined again with this uh, original form. So notice when I select that, it's now a pro boolean. So I don't need to keep adding them. This is a common mistake people make when they want to add more or subtract more. Going back to the create panel and here, using Pro Boolean again. That will just create problems for you. 
The way to do it is select the thing you've turned into a pro boolean and then just go to start picking. Choose the option you want, so I'll this time to use union, and now I can just choose those new shapes and they're all going to be added to the original one. That easy. Turn start picking off. So now that again is all one thing. Okay, so again just try and think about those two main approaches to modelling. Polygonal modelling, which I can still get back to by the way, so it's there in the stack. The original union box has the editable poly there, but I can still go and change. So I can just, for example, bring that corner out. Or maybe it looks better if it goes back in. Yeah, that's much better. And uh, go back out, back to the top. It's all still one thing. Uh, and then the other approach is compound objects. Uh, which in Max, uh, you have uh, well, you have lots of different compound objects, but the one to focus on at first is Boolean. But again, remember, Pro Boolean is a much better version of the tool. And really think of it as a way of using um, subtraction or getting to subtraction and union. Maybe intersection as well you might use a little bit, but we'll look at that later. That's another one that you've got in AutoCAD as well. But again, subtraction probably would be the most important, so you can at least make openings, but union is really useful as well. So just think about those things, maybe just to finish off, I'll quickly put some materials on and uh, show you some lighting so you have a basic idea how to do these things. And we'll go much further into materials and lighting over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so I've been showing you the Arkham design material is a great uh, little starting material because it has these preset templates which save you a lot of time. So there, get a material on, get a plane for it to sit on. And then, just to finish it off, a light, which I will get from systems, where I know I can make a daylight system, which includes a sun and a sky. Okay, so there's my sun. Just going to make the position. There you come from behind. And uh, bring that around. Then, very last thing, I'll um, make that ground surface have a material. Not sure about the mapping there, but uh, not too worried. Oh, that should be okay, so let's see what the map is. Ah, no. Okay, so let's make that have a decent size. What's this texture? Okay, so we'll make that meter. That should do. Okay, so that's ready to render. Okay, so obviously you can go a lot further with the materials and the lighting. But again, focus there is modelling, so polygonal modelling and booleans. Union and subtracting, uh, subtraction being the main ones. I can't help myself, that is going to look much better if it's a uh, shiny metal, I think. So I'll just change that to show you how easy it can be. It's using chrome instead of brush metal. And let's render again. There we go, that's a bit better. If you 
Yeah. This is mental ray. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the mental ray is the default uh, rendering engine in in 3D specs now. Oh, it does when you go to the um, render settings. So here, rendering, render setup, and then there, NVIDIA Meta. Is that the rendering program you propose to Yes, yeah. yeah. So, uh, there we should be getting shadows based on the lights, and uh, so having a bit of sun direction would really help there. It's a bit slow though. Yeah, I don't want to go too far with the rendering, but uh, we'll make it look a little bit better than that. And you can spend a lot of time setting up materials and lighting, and you definitely want to approach that as a separate thing. Again, just uh, focus on the modeling initially. There you go, that's looking a bit better. Okay, so I'll just finish that and I'll post it on YouTube for you.